I'm Scott L. Miller. It is the 25th of January, 2023, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. And today is Wednesday. We have a lot going on. One of the things we did, I, besides a busy work day that I don't need to go into because it's just normal work, tonight, Dominica, Marcella, and I went out uh, with April for a really big night of every major thing that you do when you live in Nicaragua. Meaning, we first went out for live music. We went to see Roberto Reyes play at El Bodegon in uh, El Centro, which is uh, a small, it used to be a really small music venue, uh, and they moved to a new location now. So they're quite a bit larger, but they're still a pretty intimate location. We had a really good time. Uh, we see Roberto play like every week, so he's just a regular here on the scene and a friend of ours and uh we went and there was actually a lot of people who got up and went dancing and really got into it it was a really um, a really good crowd and el bodegon does a really great job they have good food they have um, a nice atmosphere and this is my first time at the new el bodegon uh we i've been to the other one in the past and i do like the new one quite a bit more so kudos to them for making the decision to up and move to a new location because the old one while intimate was so intimate it made it difficult to listen to concerts this was a lot of fun we had a really good time uh, and then from there we moved on to Gekitos where we went and did karaoke um, this is our second time we like really liked karaoke the other night so we decided to go out and do it tonight which I will show just a tiny bit this is the night that we went out and I recorded the bust a move video that you the entire video is on the channel I know I linked it the other night but the first night that we went out um, we, we, this, I didn't do this performance. That was this night uh, when we sat in the front. First night we sat in a, one of the alcoves, then we sat right at the front door, this time. Uh, and, and very fun night. So we really liked that. And then it was late, but the girls wanted to go dancing. April had already taken off by this point. Uh, but Ida had joined us and we went out to uh, 23 Bar, the big dance club. So we went to the biggest karaoke place, the biggest dance club, but they're owned by the same place, and then started El Bodegon. So three things, and we went out dancing, uh, but I decided to come back early because the kids needed me um, to deal with the dogs and stuff. So I uh, hightailed it home on the early side, um, but everyone ended up coming really soon after me. It was kind of weird um, how close it was, but it was a bit really exhausting. I'm so tired after this, and this is setting me up for what's going to be days of not having enough sleep even at the time that I'm recording this still not enough sleep but uh, but we had a really fun night and it's it's interesting um, how easy it is to go out and do live music karaoke and dancing all in one night if that's something you want to do and you can walk from venue to venue at no point did we need a cab I and mean, we needed a cab to get to El Centro because we don't live uh, that close but um, all of those venues are really close to each other. So walking from place to place, no big deal at all, and, and makes for a very easy way to have a big night out with lots of variety and possibly of different people coming and going throughout the evening if that's what you want to do. So that was our day, uh, a lot of fun. And tomorrow we've got a really big concert. I'm not able to show you, but we're going to a really, really cool concert tomorrow at El Vivero uh, that I'll tell you all about tomorrow. Uh, today I'm recording on the Olympus EM1 Mark II, which I absolutely love. This is my favorite camera. Um, I've got the tripod set up. I'm using the Falcam quick release system. I'm recording the audio on the Tascam with the lapel mic. I've been figuring this out over the last couple days, and this setup is absolutely killer. I love it. The video quality of the, the Emsuiko lenses, the uh, amazing video uh, rendering of the Olympus color system and sensor, uh, all of that is just absolutely fantastic. And the Tascam does such a good job with the audio, but I need to have that lapel mic to do what needs to be done. And that we have at this point figured out, I think, along with the level problem. So we've, we've really gotten from a lot of like flakiness to I think we have a really solid setup at this point for when I'm doing stationary recording. I love how this looks and just for the reference I cranked up the the um, uh, light sensitivity just a little bit because it's been a little bit dark when we do this on the Olympus and I uh, um, am filming at f2 yesterday we did or the other day when we did the Olympus I started at 1.8 and then went up to 2.8 and trying to find a balance that looks really good you got that nice blurry garden in the background. 
What's nice is how easy it is to do this workflow. Because of Final Cut Pro, I'm able to take the audio and all the video files and merge them all together into a single entity really easily. And they've fixed a couple of things in that workflow that make it absolutely smooth. So um, I found that this combination of a separate audio recorder with the microphone and using the really good camera, uh, when I'm able to do it, when, I'm, when I have that chance to set it up, absolutely works fantastic and if I get a day where it's not too bright then the camera is able to stay uh, working for a really long time when I do this on a really bright day it overheats so quickly that that becomes a really big problem so um, I'm really liking this uh, I'm gonna experiment more and more with it and I'm gonna look for opportunities where I can get out and take this rig with me out into walks and stuff but it's a lot of equipment to carry around it's a lot to have exposed and I can't get very far from it because it's really easy for someone to to snatch and grab it so if I'm filming out in the country this could be great but I've really got a plan around that but when I'm here uh, recording in the garden or, or somewhere where I control this really works nice so I'm re just really excited about that but we're talking about the camera a little bit because today's topic is the camera situation here in Nicaragua for those who've been watching my shorts or just watching the news you are aware that a few days ago uh, Nicaragua issued a and and everyone's referring to it as a ban but that is not correct in any way it is an import export restriction on a large number of camera and camera uh, accessory items, including binoculars, right? So it's called cameras and binoculars. And for a long time, drones and binoculars have been illegal to bring into the country. You could probably get a license, but unless you have a special license, you can't bring them in. Drones, definitely you can get a license. Very hard to get. Um, and they were both classified as military equipment, and so it just was something you couldn't bring in. And, and it's not like you would get in big trouble. You bring it to the border, and they go, oh, binoculars, not allowed to have those, and then you wouldn't get to bring them in. With cameras, though, it's always been that cameras were allowed, and suddenly this really long list of cameras you couldn't bring in without having special uh, permission. You had to register as a cinema uh, company, right, and go through all the things you would do if you were going to be produce like a real commercial movie and get all the permissions and stuff that go with that. And of course you could, but that's a big deal. And people aren't prepared to do that, especially people who are on vacation or may just be like, oh, we're in Costa Rica. Let's head on into Nicaragua. Wait, everything in our luggage is, is import controlled? This is a problem, right? And they listed things. And some of the things that made the list include basically every camera by Panasonic, things like the Sony FX30, which while yes, it's a very video centric camera, it's also something that, you know, Gen Z vloggers will just carry around casually to do their vlogging. Uh, the GoPro 11 that I normally film on was on the list. So lots of things. And we, um, so immediately, right? Now remember, it's not banned. It's just suddenly you have to have all this permission and paperwork and pay fees to bring this stuff in or out of the country. Now, we didn't have all the details ironed out, but that's the, the gist of it. So I immediately contacted my attorney and said, okay, here's what I'm, here's the written law that I was just sent a copy of tell me what I need to do. And she read it and she's like, yeah, it looks like all of your stuff is covered that you are under import export control. Uh, so we got to figure out what to do. So she con contacted Adwana and Adwana is uh, uh, customs, right? So we actually talked to Adwana and Adwana looked at the stuff I had and said, yes, you are import export controlled. Even the stuff that's not on the list, like the Olympus that I'm talking on, which no Olympus, no Fuji was on the list. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I use or want to use, it was not officially listed, but it's essentially the same equipment and much higher end than many of the stuff that was uh, listed. Now, some things that were listed, Black Magic, which is purely uh, a mid-tier um, cinema camera, and Red and Aria, those were on the list. Those made more sense, but things like Panasonic and Sony and Canon being on the list is like, ooh, like just casual people. This is their people's vacation cameras uh, quite often. And then my Olympus and those, those were on the list. So uh, she said, yeah, your GoPro, your Olympus, basically you have to stop traveling with them. But they also said anything in the country. No, 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 no one's looking at that. That has nothing. This is a border control item. You're, all this stuff is allowed. Anything that's already in the country, 100% allowed. Like there's no question, right? It's just, this is just an import export new tariff going on uh, for a specific category of equipment. So that was our starting day. And it was a really big hit for me because I'm, I'm planning on getting new cameras. I'm planning on doing travel this year. I wanna use Nicaragua as my base for filming other countries um, as well, of course, as filming Nicaragua. And uh, this was gonna 
I mean, immediately we were starting to talk plans for getting an apartment in either Costa Rica or Guatemala so that all of my major equipment could be staged in those countries. And then when I traveled, go there, get it, and then fly out. Um, so that, that's how much complication was being introduced by this. Like just the cost of going through customs may justify an apartment in another country. So the thing that's awesome here in Nicaragua, right? That law made it for about 48 hours. It got to the central government and immediately word came down that the law was going to be rescinded instantly, right? Not, we're going to consider it. We're going to, no, they just came down and said, this is not happening. Absolutely not. And, and they stated this directly to border control. So this was sent to border control and said, not only are you not going to enforce this law, but all laws that previously exist that restrict photographic and filming equipment, absolutely gone. This is, we are open. This is, and they had an explanation, right? This is how people travel. This is how people film this beautiful country. We're a country full of volcanoes and lakes and bird watchers. And you are not going to restrict people filming how beautiful the country is. You're not going to restrict people looking at things and going out and into wildlife and exploring like all of these things. They're like, this was going to hamper tourism. It was going to hamper promotion. It was going to hamper information. Absolutely next. And so we came out of it with not just does this, does this really problematic law not exist anymore, but we came out of it with essentially protections for those of us who do uh, filming, whether it's tourism or promotion or just travel, like, like you're just a tourist and you want to film your family on vacation, or you're a surfer and you want to film, that's what the GoPros are used heavily for, right? They're big for surfers and volcano boarding and, and like outdoor action sports. Those are things that people need to record here because this is an outdoor action-y kind of country, right? We're a lot like Costa Rica in that there's a lot of wilderness and a lot of hiking and a lot of sports and, and ocean stuff. You need those waterproof cameras and all that. So, uh, so this is a really big deal, right? All those things, not only do you have all the protections you used to have, you have so much more. Bring your equipment in, feel safe that it can be here. You don't have to worry about what you have. Now, the one thing I need to say, I have had, I've heard nothing of anyone mentioning drones yet. And this is really important because traditionally drones are restricted on different grounds, not because they have cameras, but because of the way they fly, they're, they're an, an airport item, right? And they're restricted for those reasons. You're always able to get a license for drones. What we don't know is if this new thing is going to somehow make that easier or simply eliminate the licensure needs um, or if it's going to stay the same or what. So that's something we're going to find out in, as time goes on. Uh, but for the moment, all the cameras that you normally would bring, the GoPros, the pocket cameras, the point and shoots, the SLRs, the film cameras, even the big camcorders, the big television rigs, all of that, 100% completely open, bring it in, take it out, use it here, go film the country. They are welcoming everyone into uh, Nicaragua with that. Come show the country they want to be seen. Um, I'm sure that, that Intour, the, the National Tourism Board, must have called someone in the government and said, guys, you can't do this to us. Like, we need to show the country. Our country's gorgeous. That's why people come, right? <laughs> you got you to gotta get the word out. You can't do anything that, that halts the amount of people producing content like this. I mean, I'm not saying it was my show that made the difference, but you know, we get the word out. A lot of people look at just uh, different people, me being one of them, walking around the country, taking out cameras, and they say, wow, it's a beautiful country. Wow, you can go walk safely. Wow, your camera is still in your possession, right? <laughs> like all kinds of things that just going out with a camera gives a lot of information to people. Um, that, that telling you about the country wouldn't do. So um, I think it's it really strongly in um, the country's benefit and everyone's benefit for this uh, to be the way it is. This was, this was a fantastic result, right? We were so sad a couple days ago when, when the word came down that we were going to have to jump through hoops uh, to be able to do what we do. Um, in the future, like we'll be fine for now, right? My GoPro is already here and I have backup GoPros and I have multiple cameras. So I was okay for the foreseeable future, but the long term, it was, it was how we're going to deal with this. What it's just, and now it's, I feel so much relief and so much excitement that like, ah, oh, the government is happy that we're filming. They're aware that people need to get like their mentality on it is fantastic. Um, and so that's, that's just such, you know, it feels so good to know that the work we're doing in the general sense is getting attention and someone realizes that this is important and that we're doing a service for the people 
by showing uh, why tourism here makes sense, why wildlife and protections here make sense, how beautiful the ocean is, how cool the volcanoes are and all the things that you can see and do and how great our gardens are, right? So, so it turned out to be um, a really good thing. I feel that the, the thing that was really great here is that the law was, was bad enough that it triggered action. If it would have just been like, ah, oh, you know, just red and Aria cameras, like these super expensive items, that you have to, they might've been overlooked. People have been like, well, no, tourists aren't gonna use those, so it's okay. But now it's like, are you making a commercial film? We don't care, you can come too. This isn't about tourists, it's about everybody, right? Film here, do what you wanna do. Um, really, really fantastic. Uh, and, it, and it means that those of us who are hobbyists and, and use a lot of different cameras because it's something we enjoy, it kind of protects that hobby in a more general sense. Now, if you're into photography, that was always protected, right? This was purely a cinema licensure thing. And, and so they were very specific. You DSLRs, you could bring in a million dollar DSLR if someone made one, right? And no one cared. You want to go get the, the Leicas from Germany, the Hasselblads, those were fine because they're not video cameras. They're anything that was filmed, that was fine. It was the, it was specifically the, the, um, the video equipment uh, and specifically the ones that could produce, you know, 4K kind of movie level footage like this. Um, those are the ones that were, we were falling into an area where it was just, it was going to potentially impact even just the ability to collect cameras and, uh, and do different things. Because uh, a big thing, I, I'm not doing this currently, but I'd love to, uh, one of my favorite shows, Camera Conspiracies out of Toronto, right? He gets lots of different camera gear and does a lot of trials and testing and gives advice on cameras. And I do have the show, Camera Conspiracies. No, he has the show, Camera Conspiracies. I have the Camera Cafe and I'm doing similar stuff on a very different scale. He's way, but he's awesome, right? I just talk about my cameras, but that stuff is really interesting and I really enjoy it. And that stuff I would like to do. He's able to do that because in, Can in Canada, he can just go to the store and get all this equipment. Here, I don't have stores I can go to, so I have to bring everything in from the outside. And if there was going to be any kind of restrictions on that, any kind of extra fees, any kind of like questions that it may not come through the border or may, may be held for a while, that would be like, nope, not worth it. Just I can't justify it. But now knowing that it can come in no problem means that doing that kind of content that has nothing to do with it, it's just purely a camera show, right? Now that's a bit able to do as well. So it really protects a lot of things that I care about uh, for me personally. That is our day. Um, I hope that clears up for a lot of you what's going on. I did have this in the shorts, but obviously a lot more detail here um, that, that you can really feel comfortable bringing your equipment to Nicaragua um, again. And, uh, and yeah, get down here, film, show the country, uh, take your cameras out and go all over the place. Um, it's, uh, it's a fantastic country with so much to show so much to see, um, I think you'll be you'll be happy. Get down there in the comments, like and subscribe, of course. Uh, get in on the conversation. Let's talk about what cameras. You want to talk cameras? Let's talk cameras. What are you doing for travel cameras? Um, you know, GoPro is fantastic for certain things, but I use a lot of different cameras for different shooting, which is one of the reasons why the law was scary for me. And um, there's a lot of things that, as a traveler, depending on what you're doing, you may want to consider something different than a GoPro, different than your cell phone. Um, and I am going to talk at some point about why why I use a lot of things instead of a cell phone because someone did say why don't you just use your phone and there's a lot of reasons why that doesn't work so I want to talk about that but it's also there's a lot for a lot of people that does work really well so let's 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 talk about that in a future episode um, and but get down there get in the comments uh, join in on the conversation if you want to support the channel which really really helps we do have a lot of expenses here it's buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller and of course share on social media pop this on Facebook, put it on Reddit, get it on Twitter, let people know about the show, tell them that there's something interesting happening here in Central America. And uh, we look forward to not only lots more content here in Nicaragua, but the ability to take the cameras and go to neighboring countries and bring you more and more from there as well in the near future. Thanks for joining me. I will see you all tomorrow.